Hello my delicious co-creators, Lilu here. I'm in Lausanne in Switzerland and I have a big gift for you, a big present because all of these videos are presents of course and gifts of life but here I'm sitting with Tal uh, that I really appreciate for his work and his knowledge and uh, and it's kind of, it's, it's, it's one of those videos that will make a big difference in your life and, and please watch it until the end and I'm sure you'll be absolutely captivated to stay until the end of this video. Uh, thank you Tal for accepting to do this interview i'm very delighted to do this in english with you this time pleasure it's a real pleasure to work with you and i appreciate your energy <laughs> so you have studied you were a regular doctor if i could say many many years ago and then you went into the holistic medicine and you've discovered so much you channeled some information and and you have this um this very balance i would say or harmonious could we say a way of of, of seeing all this and really kind of getting what's going on, but also bringing solution. There's an aspect of your work that I really want to talk about here because I do those interviews on Akashic Records and on past life regressions and on those 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 therapies that are, that I think, that are wonderful and that can really bring a big peace in our life and liberate us. But there is something that always been missing for me in there. And we talked a little bit about it, and I think it's, it's really a central conversation here. What is your view, first of all, on the... the The, the past life regression and their importance or Akash, uh, reading the Akashic records, channeling, etc. You see, what I've discovered is that because we are not material bodies only, we have many lifetimes. So, because our emotional, mental and spiritual body could not die. So, we have this past life, but the problem is that it's not interesting to go there just for, for knowing who we have been. What is important is that in the past, it can be in this life or in other lifetimes, we have had situations where, because we, are, we have been lacking the spiritual connection, we have had Im intense emotion, fear, <gasps> fear of dying, for instance or anger because you die and you are not agreeing with what happened you are a healer and uh, they say you are a witch and they put you on a fire and you are so angry say i'm losing my life i've done nothing bad well these moments of intense emotion create a block like a piece of ice mm. and then we continue living but a part of us is missing so we are not whole because we have left abandoned part of us on the way The image I give is that it's like if you have a wonderful flat, okay, but you don't feel well. Mm -hmm. Why? Because in the cellar, you have these children who are saying, come on, free me, I'm suffering. And the problem is that only you can save this part of you. No healer can do it for you. Nobody can do it. You have one day to go there. Mm -hmm. And the way to do that is very simple. First, you release your emotion through the body like a three-year-old child. You shout and you, you allow emotion just to go out of the body. When you feel that in your body, then you will be able to teach it to the inner beings that are blocked. So as soon as you have released emotion from the body, you relax, you open your right brain, and you become a shaman, which means that you can travel with your consciousness. And first, you go to the higher realms. You meet your guides, you go into your body of light, and you feel so one with everything. Then you take your sword of light, which means that you are going to go down there where it, something needs to be done. And the beauty of this work is that it's not the therapeut or the healer who say wh where to go, it's you directing the way. Mm. So your sword of light will bring you down there to one of these beings that are all blocked in anger or victim, completely apathetic. And the, the way to, re to, to free these beings is very precise. You cannot do it just by giving love. If you say, oh, okay, I give you love, it doesn't work. Because these beings are too trapped into an emotion that make them just suffer and suffer. So what you do, you look at the being, you look into the eyes to see what the emotion is, and then this emotion, you allow it to go through you. And you imagine it's in visualization that this emotion, you let it go through your body. You dance it. Ah, you give it, on, give it to the fire and you dance. And because we are out of time, you can dance for three hours, three days or three months. <laughs> But after a moment you have done that, which is this dance that you are letting the body move, After a moment, you say to the being, how do you feel? And every time the being says, ah, I feel better. Because you have absorbed and released mm -hmm. tons of emotions. 
It can be anger, it can be sadness, it can be despair, it can be fear. Then you say to the being, now you have seen it working, now dance with me. <laughs> and sometimes they resist, they are, you know. <laughs> then you, you, you visualize that, that this part of you is like, ah, becoming free. Then, when it's done, you have allowed the emotion to be freed, and so, ah, there is a freedom, there is an opening. Then you give love to this part of you, and say, you can receive my love now. Because love can be given only when emotions are released. Because if you are full of anger and I, I say I love you, you don't hear it. Mm. I must first get rid of that. Mm. Then love can flow. Okay. And when you have done that, you take this part of you and you bring it to the light. Like if you had an elevator or something like that, or you give a gift and send it to the light. And the beauty of this work is that instead of being sabotaged by a part of you that is suffering down there, when you have done that, this part of you is in the sky in the light, and the talents of this part of you can be channeled. Give, give us some examples of, of, of some, some like well, comes that pops to your mind so we can see how uh, it could liberate even from your partner or some other things. Yes. You see, for instance, my wife, when I met her, she had a tremendous fear of sharks. She didn't like to write. Every writing was not liking. And uh, it was a fear that has no reason. Mm. Because in her youth, she was not with sharks. Nobody has been killed by sharks. So one day, when she made this in a voyage inside, she discovered that she had been uh, on, a, on, a, on a boat, and she would be writing everything, because she was a writer. And um, there is a mutinary. And uh, the mutants say, if we keep the, the writer, he's going to write everything, so it will be known. So they decide to take this writer, put it in the sea with his books, and the shark have been eating it, him. So this writer was trapped into in violent anger because he had done nothing wrong. He was just, it was totally unjust. So she saw this writer full of anger, and she said, oh, and she showed him how to do that. Then... When the anger was gone, she took him, brought him into the light. Three days later, she started to write her first book, which means that her talents of writer was again open. Mm. So many people, they have that in the, in the dark part of themselves. They have memories of having been healer and being killed or put in a fire. So they are interested in healing, but not too much, because in their mind, if I go into this direction, I will again have this problem. Or you can have been a star, for instance, you dance and you, you are beautiful, and, but you, you don't like the men, for instance, you think they are too heavy for you, and you feel. And these men that you are condemning, one day they kill you and rape you. And you say, it's because I'm a beautiful woman and because I'm a star. So you decide that this part of you is not good and you block it. Mm. So then when you see this anger or this fear, you release it, and then you can again dance and sing. You open the door that what has been blocked in the past, you are the only who can change it. That's very interesting, because nobody can do it for you. Right. If a healer goes there, the, the, the part of you will say, no, no, I don't want a healer, I want you, because you have condemned me. Mm -hmm. Because the key is that when we have been judging a part of ourselves, we say, oh, this is bad, this part of us becomes trapped in the unconscious mind. And one day, I call that spiritual psychotherapy, we have to go there down with the inner guidance of the sword of light and let the emotion be released and then we can bring to the light this part of us. Mm -hmm. And it's an important thing because too many people just do things with the mind. Mm -hmm. That's the people who say, I've forgiven all my enemies, but I have the list. <laughs> I like this story. Because intellectually, they are open to love and to light, intellectually. Mm. But down there, there are this part of us uh, that are saying, if you don't come to, to help me, I'm going to make you heal. I'm going to sabotage your life. I, I will make your life a nightmare because I want you to come and release me. And we must become our own healers. Mm. That's the key of the process. Yeah. And it's important for, 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 for spiritual people too to, to be uh, whole in all aspects, not just maybe feel spiritual and be in a beautiful garden and outside. And I'm thinking of, my God, Hawaii and Kauai and all those beautiful places and be a wonderful healer. But there's other aspects that are not really abundant and opening up. And, and what, does, what does that tell you or where is the work really needed there? What, what can yes, we do? Because, you know, many 
people they have done beautiful things in the, uh, some areas, but I think that the more we want to go to the light, the more we must go down into the dark side mm -hmm. and accept the part of us that we're not at all uh, mature and uh, wonderful. They are, we have killers inside or people who are really uh, angry or sad or feeling victim or despair, and we must take care of them. Yeah. It's very important. And when we learn to do that for the part of us, then we can help others to do it, because it's not difficult. We simply help people to relax, let the emotion go, then the process is pretty simple. And if, pa if parents do that for their children, because between 5 and 12, mm -hmm. children are very open to inner uh, journeying. Yeah, so if you say to the... I, I remember from the child, <laughs> he had a fantastic <laughs> thing. He was hiding uh, food everywhere chocolate or biscuits everywhere. And the mother was getting crazy because this was um, not healthy. And the psychologist said, what can we do for that? So I said to the child, let's go to the past with your sword of light. And he discovered that in the previous life, he was very angry and he died from anger. <laughs> so the fear was still here. So when he saw the child dying from anger, he released the emotion, bringing to the light and the, the problem was solved. Mm. So, uh, for me, the past, what is important is that the past is very uh, often not past. We keep it with us. It's like if we had a bag with all these memories of the past, and that's heavy. So we must do something to release it. And this cannot be done through uh, fasting or sprouts or whatever, or any spiritual healers. It, it can make you feel good, but you have to do this work <laughs> for yourself one day. And, and the similar technique, or I guess the technique comes from there, is that we can also use it every day. For example, when we're around negative people, or if we feel, because a lot of us, I feel, especially when we're connected, we're quite sensitive, and we feel we yeah. can be empathic. So we it's can very important, because when we feel that someone is angry or that fear, if we block it, we are outside, and we are not empathy, we're not loving. But love is not, I take your pain and I keep it. Love is, I feel your pain, I feel I can take it and release it for you. Release. Release. That's the key. When you, s you start doing that, you feel good uh, every day, and you are no more suffering from the emotion of people. And if it's one or ten or a hundred, it's the same work. You take it and you release it immediately. That's what many uh, artists do. And when they, are on the, uh, uh, they shout on the, you know, uh, uh, they are releasing the emotion of the people. And that's why people feel good when they go out. Because someone has absorbed and released. So there are two ways to release. One way is through dancing, moving the body like three years old child. And the other way is simply by, because you feel, when you have done that well, you feel that this light coming from your soul is like a um, cascade of love and light. And when you feel it, you, you don't need to keep anything. Yeah. You feel unhappy, you feel it, or you feel angry, you feel it and you release it. So when you can release it all through the light, or through gestures, you are no more with uh, taking things on your back and carrying uh, luggage or something heavy. Yeah. You are in the, in the, in the instant. Yeah. It's really important to see in all this, I feel, the, the that we have a role to play. I mean, yes. that is really, really there and we have to do the work and there is those, those, those darker sides of us and there is this thing to really take on and really act, really take full power because a lot of time we say ascending, but it feels like we need yes. to descend a little bit too. <laughs> it's true because to ascend, we have to descend into the dark uh, moment of our lifetimes and bring it to the light. Yeah. And the more we do that, the more we become our healer, healers and and we can do it for the people who don't know how to do it. Instead of saying they are bad, they are full of anger, they are violent, we can say, no, I can take it, release it, and when I do that, then I can send love. But I, you cannot send love to someone who is full of anger. You are first to take this anger out. Mm. <laughs> so what do you think of the oponopono or the, the, the whole yeah, uh, it's forgiving? It's excellent, but before doing oponopono, you have to release emotions. Mm. And in the Hawaiian culture, it goes with it. People don't know that, but before you do oponopono with your mind, you have to do it with your body. I take the pain of others, I release it through my dancing, or through the aka, like the New Zealand, you know, I let it go out of me. Then I can go with the words, I accept, I, you know. Yeah. But if you do it only intellectually, and with your heart full of uh, hate, or it doesn't work. Yeah. 
It's as simple as that. <laughs> uh, yeah, be beautiful. Those are very important distinctions here. Is there other ones that come to your mind or that you would like to say that, that you think are kind of a little bit off or there would be what good I to add a little twist to it? Is that happy people <laughs> must be feeling the flow of light because they are, body of, they are beings of light and they must have this capacity that when it's blocked, they can go out of the view of people and they can become like three years old child ah, or, or like wild animals just to release it ah sh many shamans do that they, they, when they dance it's really impressive ah they can shout like tiger and with that because they do that then they can open their right brain and work with spirits so for me it's a door to shamanism and to spirituality because sp spirituality is blocked when we are just thinking and thinking thinking in the mind with all this emotion yes i have a lot of fear but it's normal because i had a difficult life and my father blah, blah, blah. and you you, you keep it yeah. but if you release it ah, <laughs> suddenly you are what you are really a being of light that has a physical body mm. but you are no more keeping within your physical body the emotion of the past mm. Last but not least, the laugh. You're very much... <laughs> yes. you, uh, very important. Yeah. Because many people say, when I will be happy, I will laugh. Mm. So their whole lives are not happy and they don't laugh. The key is laugh for no reason. You just feel a little tense, you breathe in and you release <laughs> and you start laughing. And this laughter, even if it's a bit artificial in the beginning, after a few minutes, it makes so, you feel so good. Because when you laugh, yeah. you create in your brain endorphins on marijuana. <laughs> so you don't need to buy drugs or remedies. You make it yourself. Yeah. Just through laughing, laughter is a fantastic therapy. I have a last question because you mentioned the word drugs and, I, and um, um, a lot of times ayahuasca or other types of drugs are mentioned in the interviews with David Icke, with Graham Hancock, with, 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 with some wonderful people that had these experience or I'm thinking also of Ram Das that had those those what do you do, do you what is your perception on it as a doctor and as a I have been into that I have a book on shamanists where I describe I have been in this uh, where I tried all this peyote all this I did it for a while but then I discovered that it's better just with the dancing and the drumming to understand that you can make it yourself it's easier yeah. because these substances uh, it's not so easy to handle mm -hmm. if you are in the jungle and you fast for three weeks and you take ayahuasca okay but it's a bit complicated so my belief system is that you can pre create your ayahuasca your old you can make it yourself mm -hmm. And that's fantastic yeah. because you become independent and you don't have the problem that when you take a substance, you are for some, you are in the energy for hours. So if you go into the sky and have beautiful experience, that's fine. But if you go into the lower astral plane, I've been into that, you suffer a lot. Yeah. But when you do it just with your own consciousness, you can stop the, the journey when you want. Mm. So it's more independent, yeah. not to use substances from outside, but to create it with, with our own brain. Yeah. So it's really, uh, we have everything inside of us uh, and, and c being connected. Yes. And when we are connected, the light that goes through us is capable of creating any substance. <laughs> Our brain can create anything that exists because we are great creators. So why buy something? <laughs> you know, it can be a chemical remedy or a plant. Why not make it ourselves? It's easier. <laughs> That's the Wonderful. Uh, but, but you're not rejecting either the, the traditional medicine they have no. there? No, everything has its value. Yeah. But we have to learn a good, you know. So many of these things, if you do it in your in the culture, it's a wonderful experience. But if it's not your culture, it may be hard to swallow, so, so to speak. You know, exactly like natural people, if they take some chemical remedy, they don't stand it. Yeah. I've seen that with the, with the Unza. They were living in a beautiful state in the mountains. At one day, the Indians say, you have to come to the army. But when they have been giving immunization to the, to, to the Unza, they all died. So they had to stop it. Because they, they, they were not accustomed to this kind of chemical substances. Mm. So <laughs> the idea is that we have to use everything in a balanced way. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Tal, for this delicious conversation. Thank you. It's a pleasure.
Thank you to all of you for watching this video and sharing it wildly because there's definitely a lot of elements here I think that that have resonated with you and this is this is how this this new world works you know where where things are spread and and it's just it transform lives thank you for this these important distinction Tal I really really appreciate it in the name of everybody watching we 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 loved it <laughs> much much love to all of you watching big big kisses bye